Welcome to Grandview High School. We're going to watch the Winnetonka Griffins take on the home Grandview Bulldogs tonight. I'm Kenny Yunker alongside Mike. How you doing tonight, Mike? I'm doing good. Excited to see this game. What do you uh, think we're going to see tonight out of these uh, these two teams? I think Grandview's got another size advantage, so I think they'll uh, hit the boards harder than Winnetonka. But as we saw in the last game, their uh, rebounding advantage didn't quite bring home the win. I think uh, Winnetonka's got a really balanced team, and they've got that uh, good score there, 32, uh, Beanie Curtis. And uh, so I think we're going to see a lot of focus on him tonight. And I think we'll see a good game overall. Grandview took on Winnetonka back up at Winnetonka uh, January 28th, and uh, Benny Curtis did, had 20 points to go along with uh, Julius Sebastiano's 15 in that game. So those are probably two uh, big players to watch for Winnetonka. Uh, from Grandview in that game, Tyrone Taylor had 16, the, the usual suspects, and everybody else down in, in uh, single figures, although uh, Freedom Akimalad and Nelson Nowicki each had double figures in, uh, in rebounds. So that'll be uh, one of, I think, the interesting stories to watch tonight is to see how Grandview can rebound off of that heartbreaking uh, court warming loss that we got to see on Friday night. As the teams are coming to the benches here, we're going to get ready for the national anthem. Uh, before we get to national anthem, though, what would you think your key to this game if you're Grandy Ferris? Crash the boards and key on Curtis. I think that's a good idea. We're going to pause just a moment to honor our country with the uh, national anthem. We get set here for the introductions of the starting lineups. Uh, interesting, or it's not interesting, I guess some changes for uh, tonight. You'll get to see Nelson Nowicki back in the starting lineup. I think he started Friday night, but this is uh, uh, two games in a row for him. Nathan Scott's been in and out of the starting lineup for the Bulldogs. You get to see both of those players in that starting lineup. That means that uh, freshman Darius Walker will not get the start like he's been doing recently. Another key uh, addition that uh, got his first minutes on Friday because he got cleared from the doctor on Friday is uh, Wesley Nosekiri. What do you think uh, Wesley's going to bring to this game for the uh, Bulldogs? Just another big body down there that can uh, grab some boards. I'd like to see him get a little nasty when he plays, get a little mean streak in him. I think he can throw his body around a little bit more and uh, secure more rebounds and be meaner on the defensive end. And one of the things you see a lot with this team is they are, the Bulldogs are very junior laden and you don't really see them kind of step up. Uh, as we get the starters here for, uh, for Winnetonka. You've got uh, DJ Rivera-Wright, number two. Uh, he is a sophomore guard. Uh, looking for some of the other guys coming out. we got number five, Jose Mosby-Norris. He's a, uh, a senior guard as well for the, for the Griffins. We've got Chris Harbison. He's going to wear number 12. He's a junior forward. We've got uh, Julius Sebastiano, number 15. He's a sophomore guard, and the uh, fifth starter there for Winnetonka is going to be that senior forward, number 32, Benny Curtis, who had the 20 points on uh, the first game at Winnetonka. That first game at Winnetonka is kind of an interesting story. They got up to Winnetonka on January 10th to play the game. JV played, and as they were warming up, they got about three minutes down on the clock, and there was still only one official there at the game. They had to postpone the game at 
in all of your years of basketball, have you ever seen a game officiated by one official? Have you ever seen that attempted? Uh, I have not. I have seen a game uh, about two years ago in my recreation league where the team that we were playing only had three players and had to play with those three players until their other two teammates showed up. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Interestingly enough, when their other teammates showed up, we did lose that game. <laughs> so, only uh, in rec league basketball, yeah, huh? Can, can that happen? <laughs> Yeah, they couldn't uh, get one of the JV officials. They couldn't agree on JV officials to stay or anything like that, so they had to postpone it for a couple of weeks. Ended up playing it on uh, uh, January 28th. So we get set for tip-off. Looks like we're going to see Nelson Nowicki back at his uh, his tipping duties. Looks like he's going to match up against uh, the aforementioned Benny Curtis. That is a big body on number 32 there, Benny Curtis. Yeah, he's pretty filled out. wonder if he's a football player. You see a lot of the, a lot of guys that big play uh, play at least two sports, maybe even throw for the uh, track team. And we're underway, and the Bulldogs are going to win the tip. Hopefully that's not the last thing they win tonight. Damon King with a quick look from the baseline. Freedom of Kimawadden fighting for that rebound. That is the thing that Freedom brings to this team is he is a fighter. Tyrone Taylor going to try uh, his luck early on. Not quite there. Nelson Nowicki with the rebound. Muscling up, trying to uh, get something done. Is not able to. Had to try to pry the ball away from there from big number Cur big Curtis. And uh, Curtis is strong too. So One of these days, though, you'd like to see Nelson just reach up with that 6'8 frame of his and just throw that ball down under there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to see that tonight. DJ Rivera right. The drive gets uh, knocked away by Nelson. Bulldogs back into the front court. Freedom of Kimaladen with a look. Nelson Nowicki tipping it around, trying to get the rebound. Is able to get it to go off of the Griffins, and the Bulldogs will retain possession. You hear Coach Ferris calling uh, Nelly. That's uh, obviously for Nelson. Don't know if he ever got Nelson to do what he wanted him to do. Nathan Scott going to drive the uh, the baseline. Move and not able to connect. Rebound by Brighton Hunsicker. Check that. That's Chris Harbison. Well, neither team really doing much here. About a minute and a half into the game now. Well, one thing that you see out of uh, the Griffins is something that the Bulldogs have seen a lot. I think we've got a box in one. You're going to see uh, DJ Rivera Wright try and keep Tyrone Taylor from being able to catch the ball. And the other four guys play a 2-2 zone defense. The collapse there on Nelson Nowicki. Can't find what he wants. Damon King open up top. It's a good look three. Can't get it to go as Julius Sebastiano gets the rebound and pushes it up the front court. Goes coast to coast and is able to get inside and get the rebound. As a coach, that's got to kill you to watch a guy go coast to coast on you and not have anybody step in and at least attack the ball some. Damon Keen, or Nathan Scott there running the baseline. Drive floater, gets it to go, and is able to put the Bulldogs on the board. Ball inside to Benny Curtis. Freedom of Kimaladen working against him. Benny Curtis with a nice move baseline around Freedom to get an easy bucket. He's got that post hook move down. That was quick. There was nothing really anything that Nelson could have done. Freedom had a pretty good position on him, but you got a good move. You're going to make that happen. Jose Mosby Norris with an easy bucket in transition. The Bulldogs look to go transition the other way. I figured we'd see Jose Mo uh, Mosby Norris back off of Nelson out there. You know he's not going to attempt that three-pointer. And there's a dribbling violation. It looks like Damon thought that he was going to hand the ball off to Tyrone, and Tyrone kept going. See the Bulldogs trying to apply some pressure here. 
First sub of the game is going to be Brighton Hunsicker for the Griffins. He's going to replace DJ Rivera Wright. Brighton Hunsicker is a senior guard. And you've got a coast to coast play here from Jose Mosby Norris. Easy bucket. Coach Ferris turns to his coaches, tries to figure out what he can do, what they can tell the kids to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Yeah, eight to two is not necessarily how you want to start off a game. Certainly not what the Bulldogs were looking for, particularly after that game Friday night. I think they were hoping to come out early. Nathan Scott with a shot attempt from three, not able to get it to go. It'll be a whistle here. It'll be a foul called on one of the guys down low. It's going to be on Nelson Nowicki. It'll be his first. Seems like a cheap foul if you're Nelson, something you don't really want to get that early on. We get a chance as we get back in here. Looks like Nelson Nowicki's on a 5'10", uh, Brighton Hunsicker, how they did it early on. Oh, traveling violation against the Griffins. Ball's going to go back to the Bulldogs. Coach Todd McGuire there at Winnetonka doesn't like that call. I believe this is Coach McGuire's first year with the Griffins, and they come into the, this game at 15-6. and six. He's doing a pretty good job up there. We're looking to see what they can get going into districts. Tyrone Taylor's not able to find much light of day. Julius Sebastiano's got him locked down pretty well. Damon King into the lane. Nice, easy jumper. Benny Curtis with a look inside, goes glass, doesn't a not able to get it to go. Bulldogs push the other way with Nathan Scott, who's going to attack the rim and get called for a charge. Big Benny Curtis gets his body in there right in front of Nathan Scott, draws the foul. That's something that coaches love to see is for you to get your body in there and sacrifice in order to... Uh, Game Diedrich possession. Skinner and uh, Orlando Haynes are coming in now for Nathan Scott and Tyrone Taylor. Coach didn't like the way the guys were getting back on defense. So they bring in some fresh bodies, hopefully that can do better in transition. DJ Rivera right with that shot attempt. Foul's going to be called. See who that's going to be on. It's going to be on Nelson Nowicki. That's going to be his second team foul real quick. You know, Wesley Nosekiri looking to check in. Imagine he's going to be replacing uh, Nelson with those two fouls. <laughs> Looks like Freedom Akimawadin is going to be the one to come out. They're going to leave Nelson and his two fouls in the game. Seems a little risky there from Coach Ferris. Hope it pays off for him. Rivera Wright's able to make the two buckets go down and we back the other way Orlando Haynes with the ball gives it up to Nelson we hear coach Ferris yell slip a lot what is that what exactly does that mean uh, they can hear it on the on the background well what he wants guys to do is when they're coming off of screens he wants them to slip kind of towards the basket or slip towards an opening shot and uh, you know he talked about that in pregame uh, in his pregame speech last week he designed a lot of slip plays for Damon King. Now, I didn't really see any of those slip plays ran. I, uh, before the game, touched on the fact that I thought Damon King was going to get the ball uh, quite a bit, and he actually didn't get the ball that much. Uh, but that's what a slip is. A slip's just coming around that screen. You want to come around hard and uh, get open for a jumper or cut towards the hoop. Wesley Nosekiri able to get the first free throw to go down. Foul was called on Brighton Hunsicker. Inside there. Wesley able to get both of them to go, and in comes Martician Kelly for the Bulldogs to replace Nelson Nowicki. Looks like they didn't want a Nelson to get a cheap foul there on the defensive end, so you bring in one of the, the second senior now on this team, Martician Kelly. Looks like the uh, Bulldogs' pressure defense was able to get Benny Curtis to uh, travel, get a quick turnover with the Bulldogs regain possession. Now, now, now. 
as small as Winnetonka is, I'd really like to see them kind of work the ball to Wesley and Nelson was he, when he's in and also Freedom. I think that they could have a pretty big advantage inside if they ran it that way, slowed the game down a lot on the offensive end and just kind of worked the post. Tyrone Taylor gets the ball just inside the three-point line, able to get a jumper to, uh, to go down. Ferris encouraging his players to get back on defense so they don't give up anything easy. You see some attacking traps run at different players. Some double teams. Right now you got Benny Curtis being double teamed on the baseline, which creates an open look for D.J. Rivera Wright. Not able to get it to go. Nice block there by Tyron Taylor. Joe so Marzenko didn't, I think, know what was going on. Up. Damon King able to get inside there. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter, and you've got a tie game. Something I think that the Bulldogs are looking for to keep this game close here early on as they've been behind early. early. Samazenko gets right inside the lane. Nice pass from D.J. Rivera right. Looked like he was going to raise up and shoot it and decides instead to put it in. Damon King with a good look. Finds Martician Kelly. Something you don't see out of Martician Kelly very often. Well, he's not a not a real big scorer for the Bulldogs. As he comes into the game with just 24 points on the season. Benny Curtis goes inside hard, able to make the bu make the bucket around Damon King. Tyrone Taylor with the ball in the front court. One thing that we've seen this year a little bit is as the Bulldogs are boxed and won, you see Tyrone Taylor. I think sometimes try and a little too quickly uh, with those shots. Ortizia Kelly, four points tonight. Trying to raise that, that per game average of 28 points on the season. 47 seconds left. I think you're going to see the Griffins maybe try and run this clock down to keep the last shot. Jose Mosby Norris almost loses the, the handle. Orlando Haynes trying to get a count, and as he gets close enough to get a count, and get the ball, hand the ball off to DJ Rivera right. Tyrone Taylor in there defending. Mosby Norris guarded by Orlando Haynes. You hear Coach Ferris call X. That's their call for a trap when they get an opportunity to do that. 13 seconds left on this clock. Let's see what the Griffins can put together. Ball inside, Samazenko gets an attempt, doesn't quite go where it wants to. Westby knows Kiri's not able to control the rebound. You got several guys checking in, Jalen Walker, Chris Harbison, and Sebastiano. Check all, all check in for the Griffins. Looks like the Griffins have the five guys on they want with 1.7 to go, try and get a quick entry, quick, uh, quick shot. Chris Harbison with the shot attempt, not able to get it to go. We're going to be 14 all here at the end of the first quarter. And I think that's going to send us to a commercial. You're watching MySliceTV.com. We'll see you on the backside. me I number one in this class I rule this lab I number one hey hey I don't think so yes Weather! I am a king Woo! you wouldn't do it there Woo! so don't do it here sportsmanship it's up to you what jerk And we're back at Grandview High School for the start of the second quarter. We take a look at some of the uh, stats from the first quarter, which are available at kcmetrosports.com, thanks to uh, Coach Heath Cooper and his iPad there on the Grandview bench. Uh, things to stick out for me, rebounding 5-5. Five to five. Not really uh, anything big out of the, uh, the Grandview Bulldogs' size advantage. Nothing else really jumps out at, at me as, as being entertaining to talk about as it's been a pretty flat first 
first quarter for both teams. Get to see our first look at Darius Walker, the freshman for, for the Bulldogs. I think that size advantage is really going to come into play, though, here in the later, later quarters when rebounding really uh, puts a, a big factor on the game is, is later on in the game because you want to get your second-chance buckets and stop the, uh, stop the opposing team from getting their second-chance buckets. So I think we'll see a, a bigger leap in the rebounding here in the second half and the second quarter. Chris Harbison with a nice entry pass to Julius Sebastiano who gets an easy layup. I said easy layup for the Griffins a few times, and I don't think that's what the Bulldogs are looking for. They need to put pressure on, particularly with that size advantage they have inside. Freshman Darius Walker attempts a three-pointer there from the corner, not able to get it to go. And very quickly the Griffins are back. Ball stolen by Freedom Akeem Aladdin and then turned right back over as Joe Samazenko works hard to get that ball right back. And Darius Walker guarding Jose Mosby Norris. A senior freshman matchup, although if you look at, at Darius, you may not know he's a freshman with that chin strap beard. <laughs> and his six foot three frame. Jumper from Julius Sebastiano, able to go down, give the Griffins a four-point lead. Tyrone Taylor quickly into the Bulldogs' front court, hands off to Darius Walker, not able to get it to go, but Freedom of Keenan Lawton there on mop-up duty. Maybe we're starting to see that size advantage there with that play in particular. Ball goes out of bounds off of Freedom Akeem Aladdin, who was pleading with the official that it wasn't off of him. How often when players plead with officials are they absolutely lying about it? Uh, the majority of the time. <laughs> and about 100% of the time the call never gets changed. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty pointless, but just about everybody does it. I do it, so I don't fault him. The Bulldogs and Griffins each uh, sub in their number their number twos, Damon King for the Bulldogs and DJ Rivera Wright for the Griffins. DJ Rivera Wright gets that ball, briefly knocked away by Nathan Scott, but able to reset things up top, get something started for the Griffins as they run a try and run a play. Samazenko with the ball at the high post. And we're gonna try and start it over again. Ball into the high post there. Rivera right. Don't think he drew iron there. Did get some of the backboard, so you don't get to hear the air ball chant from the Bulldog faithful. Nathan Scott inside. Too hard. Nice look there from Damon King to find a cutting Nelson Nowicki who goes up too strong. Chris Harbison momentarily loses it. Ball stolen away by Tyrone Taylor. He's going to go the other way. Uses his speed. Gets in and layup. He's fast. He's deceptively fast. He doesn't look like he's working that hard to get that speed, but is able to get by defenders with ease on that play in particular. Definitely turned it on there at the end. A trap in here. Saw Damon King call for the trap, and Nathan Scott came in to oblige. Not able to get anything to go. Jose Mosby Norris slashes through the lane. Nathan Scott with the ball, looking to do something. Your coach Ferris say, look inside. Nelson Nowicki goes to work. It's the ball up high off the glass, not able to get it to go. And we're back the other way. Wow. Too hard off the glass from Jalen Walker. Chris Harbison is there for the rebound. Gets fouled as he goes up. Foul called on Nathan Scott. Chris Harbison at the line. Big Benny Curtis comes back in. Here's that speed we were talking about with Tyrone Taylor. So he's able to get to the lane. Easy bucket. Wesley Noskiri checks back in for the Bulldogs. Chris Harbison to attempt his second free throw, try and put a four-point lead up there for the Griffins. 
It's going to be interesting for me to see uh, how Grandview will do on the boards now that they got their two true big men in there. Then again, Tyrone Taylor and Damon King, they're not small. Damon King's got a six foot four frame, and Tyrone Taylor's sitting at six three, and Damon King's as tall as Winnetonka's tallest player. So realistically, they shouldn't really lose the rebound battle or even be close. Nelson Nowicki with a reverse layup attempt gets hacked by Benny Curtis in there. Benny Curtis is going to have none of that. If you're going to want those two points, you're going to have to earn them at the stripe. We've talked about it on this broadcast before. Nelson Nowicki's uh, interesting shot attempt as he takes his left hand off the ball. <laughs> off the back of the rim, able to get it to bounce in. The Winnetonka coaches are saying it went off of the support that's above the, uh, the bucket. If it does go off that support, it does not count. The officials say it didn't go up off that, uh, that support. Diedrich Skinner and Orlando Haynes check in for the Bulldogs. There's uh, Coach Todd McGuire and Kirk Stegeman and Scott Sellemeyer. Nelson Nowicki able to get both of them to go. Bulldogs look to get some traps. Ball goes off of Damon King's foot, and the Griffins are going to have to work to get it in again. Just looking at the uh, coaching staff for Winnetonka there, uh, their freshman coach, Joe Wint, was actually uh, one of my last basketball coaches. So I know that their freshmen are being coached pretty well. Marquise Doherty goes up. Going to be a foul called on Diedrich Skinner. Wesley Nosekiri knocks the ball off the uh, backboard to make sure that Marquise Doherty is going to have to earn those two points at the line. Took a pretty hard fall there, too. Jump right back up, which is what you want to see your players do. Basketball is absolutely a contact sport. Anybody that tells you it's not has never played the game. It's absolutely the truth. Sometimes though, some of those injuries can be even worse. you find on the football field sometimes because you don't have pads to keep you from that fall that we just saw Marquise already take. Well, you're Not seeing a lot of players now. I mean, even with the cuts they're making, just like uh, the Boston Celtics, they've lost Rajon Rondo and Leandro Barbosa uh, here in the last two weeks to torn ACLs, and those are commonly football injuries. And now you're starting to see them on the basketball court as players develop and their skills develop. Wesley Nosekiri with a shot attempt inside, a little touch that... Can't get it to go. The Griffins are back all the, on the other side. You see Benny Curtis trying to work inside there on Wesley Nosekiri. He wants the ball. He's calling for it. Harbison's going to drive the baseline. Goes down hard. Bright Hunsicker's there to mop up, get the rebound, and an easy bucket for him. Diedrich Skinner, nice entry pass to Nelson Nowicki. Seeing a really physical game here from Grandview uh, down in the paint. And that's, that's honestly, that's what I like to see. That's where you're going to start seeing that affect Tonka later on in the game. Particularly with the size advantage. Oh, yeah. Benny Hunsicker, or I'm sorry, Benny Curtis goes in, puts his shoulder into Diedrich Skinner. No call. Benny Curtis is not able to get the, uh, uh, get anything to happen. And Wesley Nosekiri goes down and looks to be in some pain. He's grabbing that knee. He's had some knee problems this year. You hope for a kid, a junior like Wesley, who hasn't been able to play a lot of minutes, that this is not something serious. But as he looks at it, it looks to be something that is not going to get him back in this game very quickly. As the coaching staff and training staff go out to tend on him, we do want to take a moment to remind you that this, the Slice Network is – uh, heavily involved with some Grandview students. We've got some students involved in the broadcast tonight. Dion Peterson, Delshawn Newsom, Chris Gunn, and Marcos Thomas all doing some different duties. Some, ca some cameramen in particular, some salesmen trying to sell some DVDs. And we're going to run that last play back by you so we can see what exactly happened to Wesley here. See him there on the corner of your screen. Looks like his knee just gave out on him, so no telling what really uh, transpired there. He's still on the ground, and it looks like he's in some pretty good pain. They've got him sitting up now and kind of feeling on his knee a little bit. So you never, never really like to see this with a younger, younger player. I 
hoping it's nothing too serious. Did they ever uh, really find out what was wrong with his knee earlier on in the season, just a sprained knee? I think or? it was just a sprained knee. A uh, coach thought it was a patellar tendon. We're going to go to a quick break as they tend on Wesley. You're watching MySliceTV.com. We'll see you on the backside. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Is, I don't it well. You wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. We're back here at Grandview High School. Wesley Nosekiri still being tended to by the Grandview staff. The uh, athletic trainer Amanda Payne there working on Wesley's knee. Coach Randy Ferris and Coach Reggie Morris there for support, talking to Wes, trying to make sure that uh, he's going to be okay. Offering their assistance to get him up. Got to get him up and off the floor here at some point. Wes gets up. You see, uh, see him try and, and limp off, and you're going uh, to see, see the coaches uh, help him off as he says he can't put any weight on that knee. As we look to get back underway here, we do want to remind you that you can order copies of, uh, of this game. You can order DVDs. There's a box right under where you're watching. If you're watching on YouTube, go to MySliceTV.com. Click that Buy DVD link. If you're watching us live, jump in that chat room. Chat with us. We'd love to hear from you. We'll put some of those uh, comments on the air. Looks like we're about to get back underway. Bulldogs are going to bring in Marticion Kelly and Darius Walker to play some bigger minutes here, I think, in particular. Uh, you'll see a lot of Darius Walker going forward. He seemed to be the odd man out when Wesley came back, and so I think you're going to see him get those minutes again. I haven't really seen Tyrone Taylor be able to get any separation whatsoever. It seems like that's all they're keying on is him. And, I mean, if that's the case, and that's got to leave some guys open somewhere. Well, you've got the – yeah, it's a, that's a, looks like it's a boxing – or a, a diamond in one. They go a little one, one, two, one zone underneath. And you've got uh, Marquise Doherty trying to keep close tabs on Tyrone Taylor. I think the easiest way to beat that box in one, diamond in one, is let the other four players on the team beat you. Tyrone Taylor not able to get the three-pointer to go. Benny Curtis comes up with the ball on the ground and able to get it back in the hands of Julius Sebastiano. He's going to get things started for the Griffins. Benny Curtis working inside on the freshman. I think Benny Curtis knows he's got a size and strength advantage. Damon King steps down to help and able to work with Darius Walker to get the steal. We go back the other way. 128 left here in the first quarter. Shot attempt from Damon King. Able to get it to go as we get that tied up. We're going to run down and get a quick interview with Coach Ferris at right, right as we go to halftime, see what his thoughts are. Benny Curtis not able to fight through the Bulldogs. Nice look from uh, Tyrone Taylor to Damon King who gets it knocked away as he goes up, but is able to draw the foul. I think Tyrone had a shot opportunity there and passed it off to the cutting Damon King who had a clearer look. That's probably the best decision in that situation. Glad to, good to see Tyrone not try and force a shot up. I, I know it's got to be frustrating to be boxing one and not be able to get your hands on a ball, but uh, he seems to be fighting through it pretty well. Nathan Scott and Nelson Nowicki check back in for Orlando Haynes and Marquisian Kelly. For the Griffins, you get DJ Rivera Wright and Jose Mosby Norris back in the game. CTE, 
Damon King to get this second shot to go. Able to knock it down. You see the Bulldogs apply a little bit of pressure here. Benny Curtis with the ball in the front court dribble. And I don't know if that if that's what Todd McGuire wants. His, his big man with the ball. Nate Scott picks it off and is able to get it up to Tyrone Taylor, who's able to get it to go. Tyrone gives Nathan a little nod for the good pass. That's what you like to see from Grandview here is getting some turnovers here right before halftime and putting up some points in transition. Benny Curtis puts the ball on the floor, spin move inside. Jumper in the middle of the lane. If you're Coach Ferris, you got to be telling Nelson, get your hands up. You're six foot eight, son. 23 seconds to go. Bulldogs pass ball inside to Nelson Nowicki. Gets it back over to Damon King. Imagine we're going to look for a, a last shot attempt here for the Bulldogs. Ball poked away from Nathan Scott by Jose Mosby Norris. 11.2 to go here on the clock. Bulldogs to inbound the ball right at midcourt. Tyrone Taylor gets the ball in his hands. I imagine you're going to see him go this alone. Passes across. Nathan Scott off to Damon King. Not able, not able to get it to go. Sorry, that was Darius Walker with that shot attempt. As we go to the half, 27-26. We're going to go to our interview here with uh, Coach Randy Ferris right before the half. Here with Coach Ferris. Coach, let's talk about uh, the loss of Wesley. What's he going to do? What's that going to do for your team in the second half? Well, it just changes the rotation a little bit. Wesley's been really coming along playing inside well, but the guys that we can put in for him that can give us some, some different skills. Uh, Martizian Kelly is a really good uh, defender that gets us going up and down. And then Darius Walker's a better offensive player a little bit, so uh, we'll just uh, add, put those two in the mix, and, and I think we'll be all right. What do you look for your team to do defensively in the second half? Uh, basically more of the same. We're, we're getting back on defense now, and yet we're still speeding them up a little bit, and that's what we hope to do. Thanks, Coach. You heard from Coach Fares there. What they'd like to do here in the second half is just a little bit more of the same. Keep speeding them up and speeding them right into their defensive pressure, and getting some turnovers. So what do you think of what Coach had to say there? Well, I think that you're you're certainly going to see, uh, it sounds like more Martician Kelly likes the uh, energy that he's going to give him in the uh, when it comes to the the defensive end. You certainly lose the size, which you, you, you're not too happy with, but uh, and then you're going to see a lot of Darius Walker, I think, down there, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing for the Bulldogs to get that freshman in there. He's put in some really good minutes. So hopefully uh, Wesley is all right. He's got to see him sitting over there on the, on the side. He looks like he's still in pain, but certainly not as much pain as he was originally. As we take a look at the stats as we go here, as we're here at halftime, uh, you've got Damon King with seven, Tyrone Taylor with six for the Bulldogs. Uh, you do have Martizian Kelly with four and Nelson Nowicki with four. Those are your four leading scorers. 12 rebounds for the Bulldogs, 11 for the Griffins. Been a pretty slow-paced game overall in comparison to what we saw on Friday night with that Raytown South Grandview game. I think the big uh, key here has been the five steals for Grandview versus the two steals for Winnetonka. I think that's why ultimately Grandview's leading. Only up by one here, but I think if we see some more some more pressure like we have inside, some more pressure defensively like uh, Coach Ferris said. I think Grandview's going to pull this one out. If you take a look at, at the stats, you do see the Bulldogs have six offensive rebounds. I know that's one thing that they like to get are those second chance opportunities. Uh, you've got Freedom of Kimo leading the way there with three of those. So that's certainly something that gives the Bulldogs, I think, an advantage over, uh, over the Griffins is their work on the offensive end. If you are Coach McGuire, what are you telling your kids right now in the locker room? Oh, I mean, they've got to learn to crash the boards more. That's all, I mean, that's all it really is. They need to box out more, and they need to get their hands up and try and cause more turnovers. What I'm surprised is 
neither team has a three-pointer in this game. Yeah, they, that's definitely not anything we're used to here for Grandview. I Tyrone think, Taylor's usually got three or four by this point. I think that might speak to that box and one defense that you're seeing out of the out of the Griffins that they've really kind of gotten uh, Tyrone Taylor to not be able to to get those three point looks that that he's used to. So one of the things that I certainly look to see there is, uh, is from the Griffins is with Wesley with Wesley going down. Maybe we'll see a little bit more aggression from Benny Curtis down there because that, that is such a big body. Uh, you still have Freedom and, and Nelson for the for the Bulldogs, but you don't quite have as many bodies to throw to throw at Benny Curtis. And Nelson sitting there with with two fouls is going to make it fairly difficult for him going forward to to be that that aggressor on on defense. But it's not like he's big height wise. It's just he's he's bulky. He's strong. He's quick actually inside too with with his spin moves and everything else. I mean, he's got a lot of potential to uh, disrupt this game. We saw that, that baseline spin move that he, he had earlier on, so that was certainly something. He's, he's got some post moves down there, The something you certainly have to learn when you are the big-bodied uh, inside guy, and as a senior, he's, he's done that pretty well. We're going to head on out to a commercial. We'll see you back. You're watching MySliceTV.com.
And we're back at Grandview High School for the beginning of the second half here. The home Grandview Bulldogs taking on the visiting Winnetonka Griffins. 27-26, Grandview High School leads. A few weeks ago up at Winnetonka, the score was 25-24 Grandview at the half. So I know that the Bulldogs are hoping that the same thing doesn't happen to them. It was a 21-16 quarter from the uh, Griffins to give the Griffins the lead that they held on to for the remainder of that ball game. Well, I think we're going to see a different Grandview here in the second half. I think Grandview's still going to keep crashing the boards, but I think it's going to make a bigger impact on the game this half than it did the first half. Uh, Winnetonka's bodies were flying all over the place. They were getting bodies put on them, so I think they're going to be a little bit more tired now in the second half. That's when those body blows really come into effect. So I think we can see a uh, big half here potentially for Grandview as long as they keep it up. We're going to get started here in 33 seconds on the clock. I imagine you're going to see the same starting lineup that you saw from the Bulldogs uh, as they walk onto the floor. That is what we're going to see. I haven't seen exactly the lineup that Winnetonka is going to put onto the floor. They're still actually shooting a couple of buckets trying to get a couple of uh, couple of quick shots. One thing you do see from uh, from officials here in the high school level time to time is if the team's not on the floor when they want them, and they'll let the ball be inbounded or start start the clock, start their count real quick. Uh, you, as, as, a, as a coach, you, you never want that to happen, but it is, and it looks like that's what we're going to see here from the official. He wants this ball in, but is going to let them come in and, and get that in there. So uh, I think ultimately that's best for, for both teams. <laughs> I saw Tyrone Taylor calling for a yeah, technical there. He wanted a tech. <laughs> what a time to just see him put the ball down and start their five count to One get the on team the on. One on the ball. Inside, they got Julia Sebastiano cutting to the basket for an easy layup to get the lead back for the Griffins. Bulldogs come into the court. Looks like we have that diamond and one. Tyrone Taylor with the ball up top. They start moving around, try and get the defense moving. Get the ball inside to Freedom, who gets the ball off to his running mate there inside, Nelson Nowick. He goes up, but starts the ball so low when he goes up that Benny Curtis is able to come over the, the top and keep him from getting the bucket down. Does draw the foul. It's Benny Curtis' second foul. It's only the fourth foul in the entire game for the uh, Griffins, fifth foul in the entire game, five fouls for the Bulldogs, so should have everybody available as the game goes forward, which is ultimately I think what you want out of both teams. You, you want the game won or lost by, by the best players, not have somebody foul out and change the game that way. Nelson looks to put the Bulldogs up. He's three for three from the line tonight so far. And it will make that four for four as he takes that left hand off the ball. He's got one of the most consistent strokes on the free throw line on this Grandview team, though. I mean, I wouldn't say uh, you'd want to see anybody but Tyrone Taylor at the line towards the end of the game when, when the pressure's really on, but I wouldn't say that you wouldn't want to see Nelson there either. And that's something that's kind of important, I think, as, as the year goes on, is you feel like you can get the ball inside and, and let teams do what they want to your inside guy because you know he can get the uh, get the two points at the line. You got a slashing DJ Rivera right. Well, and that's huge. I mean, realistically, if you've got a guy that's down there that can score those easy easy buckets and take some contact and go to the free throw line and hit those, I mean, that's huge. That's, that's points all game long. That's not really the strategy we ever really see from Grandview. Grandview's typically of an outside-in team as opposed to in, uh, working the ball inside and kicking it out when there's nothing inside. We say that, but Nelson Nowicki, 58% from the year on the line. Is he really? So the numbers don't bear it out, but he certainly, as of late, he certainly has seemed to have a very consistent stroke. I think that was early on in the year he was still working on it and able to kind of find the touch. Damon King with a hard pass attempt gets batted out of bounds by the Griffins. You can see the ball inbounded from the Bulldogs underneath. Being a cheerleader is a dangerous occupation down there as you have balls flying in at you. Some of the girls are very glad that they were uh, not hit by that ball. Tyron Taylor with a quick jumper there on the baseline. Bulldogs able to get the rebound back. Nathan Scott works the ball to the other side. See the Bulldogs try and set something up at the top with Damon King. Get Tyrone Taylor off a couple of screens. He's double teamed in the corner. Loses possession of the ball, but 
Going to stay with the Bulldogs. Stay with the Bulldogs as Chris Harbison and DJ Rivera Wright knocked that out of bounds. So what you want to see out of that diamond and one, box and one defense is some collapsing defense on that one player. Nathan Scott, jump shot attempt, doesn't get it to fall. And Benny Curtis with the ball into the front court. Goes inside. Bucket goes down, but I think you're going to see a charging foul picked up. Nathan Scott able to get his body down there, draw the foul. I don't know if I'd want to take the foul on Big, uh, big Benny not. Curtis. I'm out. That's Benny Curtis's third foul. He's got to take a seat. That's going to be big for the Bulldogs is the one big body that the Griffins have is now off the court. Look, to, look for Freedom and Nelson to really kind of go to work. They're inside. When you're being zoned, is it harder to get the ball inside as you, as you get some, some collapsing, or do you want it to be a man-to-man -man defense to work that inside more? Or? I definitely uh, prefer a man if I'm going to work inside just because you can always get one-on-one -on -one and box out and, and really post up your man. As opposed to a zone, you always got to worry about the passing lanes being jammed and, and other factors. So I definitely think uh, if you're trying to work the ball inside, you definitely want it to be in a man. But Tyrone Taylor fouled by D.J. rivera Wright. Tyrone was not very happy with uh, – how things worked out, I'm not sure if it was for, if it was because he was being pushed or if they didn't think the whistle came early enough. <laughs> Damon King inbounds the ball to Tyrone Taylor, swings it over to Nathan Scott. Seeing another slow, uh, slow start to a quarter as both teams really just have two points apiece here. Damon King with a three-point attempt. Freedom Akeem Aladdin with a big rebound, able to muscle the ball back up for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's what you're going to see, really, with uh, Benny Curtis being out for Tonka. Gravy's really going to have a chance here to grab just about every rebound that comes their way. Sebastiano with a shot attempt, not able to get it to fall. Chris Harvison working inside, able to draw the foul on Freedom Akeem Aladdin. That's going to be his second. Chris Harvison goes to the line, try to bring this game to within one for the, for the Griffins. It's Benny Curtis coaching from the sideline, trying to get his guys to – Keep, keep him in the game as he's got to take a rest. Coach Todd McGuire, the longer you can keep this game close, the happier you are with that big body sitting on the bench. Oh, yeah, definitely uh, keeps those minutes off of Curtis's legs, and he'll get put back in when time comes for, that they really need him back in there to get this game close again or to really take it uh, to another level and may possibly win this thing. 4.45 to go, 31-30 Bulldogs. We saw Martician Kelly walk across us here to check in at the uh, table. It's one of the things that Coach Ferris talked about at halftime is that he looked for big minutes from Martician Kelly in replacing uh, Wesley Noskiri. Tyrone Taylor's fouled by Chris Harbison. Martician Kelly gets to check into the game. Going to replace Freedom, it looks like. Give Freedom a, a rest on the bench. Looks like we're going to get a timeout called here by the uh, Griffins. They want to talk a few things over. Be a quick 30-second timeout. While we're at this timeout, I do want to take a moment to recognize those Grandview students that are involved in this broadcast. Uh, Dion Peterson, Delshawn Newsom, Chris Gunn, and Marcos Thomas got a shot there. It's Dion Peterson down there on the baseline, working a camera. See if we can get a shot of one of those other guys pulled up here. Looks like that's Marcos Thomas back there behind. And let's see if we can get a, a shot of Delshawn here before the other. Uh, there he is, sitting down there in a chair, relaxing. Great opportunity for some Grandview High School students to take part in this broadcast. As the Slice Network is, is, is run by uh, Grandview alum Sheldon Neal sitting over here to our right on the, the producer's table. Bulldogs inbound the basketball and get things back underway here with 4.35 left to go in the third quarter. Ball is knocked away. Tyrone Taylor does track it down, get things going back again for the Bulldogs. Crossed over a couple of times. Nice entry pass to Nelson Nowicki. Goes up strong off the backboard. Easy two. Ooh, I think they uh, wanted to travel there on Jalen Walker. Chris Harbison trying to control. Damon King knocks the ball off Jalen Walker's head. Gets it back and is able to find Tyrone Taylor for an easy layup. Back the other way real quick. Chris Harbison inside. Looks like he's 
fouled inside. Official underneath didn't like what he saw. Foul called on Nathan Scott for a reach in. Uh, from my vantage point, that certainly looked like a uh, jump ball for sure. Jump ball. There's that attempt there from Tyrone Taylor. Get Darius Walker and Orlando Haynes back in this game for the Bulldogs. Griffin's inbound the ball to Julius Sebastiano. We are back underway. Entry pass. Didn't look like Chris Harbison was ready for that entry pass. Nice look from Tyro Taylor up ahead to Martician Kelly. Able to get the bucket and the foul. Martician Kelly's having himself a game. Six points going to the line here to see if he can convert on the end one. It's a career game for Martician Kelly. As he's comes in averaging a point and a half a game, and he's got six already. I mean, it's four times his average. That's definitely going to help boost that up Increased his, his output 25% on the year. So he gets his sixth point of the, of the year. Or six point of the game, I'm sorry. Griffins won a chance to talk it over. Coach Todd McGuire not happy with the 37-30 game that the Bulldogs are there, are at. We're going to take a – we're just going to show you what we're doing tonight. I thought that, that was the cue for some uh, – for the commercial music. You are watching MySliceTV.com. We encourage you to chat with us. As I look over, it looks like that chat box is empty. Love to see somebody – Somebody out there in TV land, talk to us. Gets lonely here in the uh, on the stands. Just Mike here to talk to. I'd like to hear from you. Martician Kelly looks to get his seventh point of the game. Able to get it to fall. Career night for Martician Kelly. Seven points. It's a big output for him. Ball is tipped up. Griffins are able to get that possession back. Jose Mosby North into the lane. Tyrone Taylor ends up coming up with the loose ball. Up and under. Not able to get to fall. Darius Walker with the rebound attempt. Can't get that one to fall either. And back we go the other way with Jose, Jose Mosby Norris. Loses control Loses of the, the ball. ball. He tries to go up for it. And in comes Diedrich Skinner. Got Brighton Huntsucker coming in for the Bulldogs. Todd McGuire not happy with that call underneath. Bulldogs will take it. Diedrich Skinner brings the ball into the front court. Got Tyrone Taylor sitting on the bench, and it looks like we've got a little 2 3 zone here. Skip pass from Darius Walker, picked off. Chris Harbison goes in. Creates the contact with Orlando Haynes, who's called for the foul. Orlando doesn't understand what that call was, as Chris Harbison is going to, I think, go to the line, although I don't know that he really was going up for a shot attempt. They're going to give him two free throws, as that foul's called on Orlando Haynes. 2.58 to go. Still no Bulldogs in double figures, although you've got Tyrone Taylor and Nelson Nowicki each with eight. Martician Kelly and Damon King with seven. In comes Tyrone Taylor, Damon King, and Freedom Akeem Aladdin for the Bulldogs. Going to leave Martician Kelly and Orlando Haynes in the game. Coach Ferris, why would you take Martician out? He's got seven points. Leave him in. Get most minutes Martician's seen this year. I think he's going to keep putting in the guys that he, he knows will hold this game down. Martician's been great, but he's not been one of those guys to uh, – that's really pioneered this team this year. So, Martician Kelly with a rebound underneath. <laughs> able to make it go. And there he's got, he is the leading scorer for the Bulldogs. Martician Kelly with nine points for the Bulldogs to lead, lead them. You've got Joe Samazenko with the uh, big bucket. Benny Curtis is getting ready to come back into the game here. So, I think. Coach McGuire's had just about enough of uh, having no presence Tyrone inside. Taylor gets to the short corner, pulls up. 42-32, Bulldogs, 10-point lead, biggest of the game. They don't have there. They come the two points up on the uh, big scoreboard. Three-point attempt. That's Brighton Hunsicker. That is the first three-pointer of the game. Finally, with two minutes left on the third quarter, we see a three-pointer. But I don't think that he really wants to dare our sharpshooter, Tyrone Taylor. 
And this kid's got in the gym range. I saw him make a few from right where he was just standing, or right where Damon King was standing uh, last game. Tyrone Taylor certainly has some range and was able to keep the Bulldogs in it. He's got an open look for three. Can't oh, get it to fall. Damon King with the uh, rebound. Pass inside to Martise and Kelly. Can't get it. Control of it. Freedom of Kimelad comes up with the loose ball. Goes up and is fouled. Looks like that foul is going to be called on Joe Samazenko. It's going to be his first foul. We're going to see Benny Curtis back in this game as soon as Freedom Akeem Aladdin gets his first free throw attempt. <laughs> Misses that shot. In comes Benny Curtis and Marquise Doherty for the Griffins. Tyrone Taylor, the first one to break double figures for the Bulldogs as he's got 10. Nelson Nowicki checking back into the game. Give Martician a break. Martician gets the uh, applause of the, the bench and of the coaches. Grabs some water and sits right down next to Coach Cooper so we can get his call real quick. It's a very wide stance that Freedom Akeem Aladdin has as he makes that second free throw to give the Bulldogs an eight point advantage. Bulldogs beginning to win the, uh, the, free th or the uh, rebounding 21 14. Ball knocked out of Benny Curtis's hand by Orlando Haynes. Able to be controlled by the Griffins. Sebastiano goes up. Ball is knocked out. Foul called underneath. One official seems to be calling most of the fouls tonight. It's Orlando Haynes. It's called with the with the foul on the reach, and that's his second. A picture of uh, the Grandview bench coach Cooper there with his head down. He's working on the stats, talking there to Coach Morris on his left. Julia Sebastiano with the free throw attempt, able to get it to go. Seven point advantage for the Bulldogs. We've, we look at some of these stats. You've got Freedom Akeem Aladdin with six rebounds. Damon King with four. Tyrone Taylor, four assists. Damon King with three. Damon King having himself a real nice basketball game to get today. He is the Slice Network featured player today. Talk more with him later, and if we get if we get a chance after the game, we'll see if we can catch up with him. If he's uh, willing to chat with us, which would be if they Bulldogs win. Entry pass from Orlando Haynes into Freedom Akeem Aladdin. He's fouled. I would like by, to see Orlando Haynes by Benny up. Curtis. That's Benny Curtis's fourth foul. He's going to go uh, go to the bench. Joe Samazenko comes in to replace him. Benny Curtis not happy as he has to sit down on the bench. Got one and one for Freedom Akeem Aladdin. I would have definitely liked to see seen Orlando Haynes pull up for a shot there. I mean, he's wide open. Can't fault him for getting the, the bigs in, in, involved inside, though. I know that's one definitely thing that the, the getting coaches. Getting that foul call on Benny Curtis is another big thing there. But Wide stance from Freedom Akeem Aladdin. Not able to get it to go as Marquise Doherty comes up with the rebound and kicks it to Sebastiano. Shot attempt from the Griffins. Three-pointer from Brighton Hunsicker. Pulls the Griffins within three. Looks like we got ourselves a game again. 45 seconds to go. Looks like the Bulldogs want one shot, and I think the Griffins will let Orlando Haynes dribble the ball here and run time off the clock. This is when, as a basketball fan, I wish high school basketball had a shot clock. <laughs> I re this is the one thing that I can't stand is just watching teams dribble this ball out for a minute, minute and a half sometimes. Orlando Haynes looks to get things be started at the top of the key. Kevin Taylor comes from some screens. Gets the ball inside, reaches up at the free throw line. Ball doesn't fall. Loose ball inside. Tyrone Taylor with the rebound. Doesn't get the shot attempt off. We go to the third quarter, the end of the third quarter here. 43-40, Bulldogs with the advantage. Bulldogs able to keep the Griffins from getting the advantage in the third quarter like happened up in, uh, up at the Winnetonka gym a few weeks ago. 
you're Coach Ferris, what are you going to tell your guys right now? What do you want them to do here in this fourth quarter? Keep doing what you're doing. You're winning by, uh, you know, I mean, when we came out of half, they really only were up by one on the boards, and now they're up by six. And they're winning by three on uh, in the game, and they've got an advantage of seven offensive rebound-wise. So they're getting a lot of second-chance buckets. And I think you got to get Martizio and Kelly back in there and see what he can do. He's got a lot of momentum. I mean, six times his point output in one game? I definitely think you got to put this guy back out there and see what he's got left in the tank. And you've got one, one thing that is very interesting on these stats, the Bulldogs have more offensive rebounds than they have defensive rebounds. And they're matching the defensive rebounds of the Griffins. You've got 10 defensive rebounds apiece for, uh, for, the, for the two teams, but 12 offensive rebounds for the Bulldogs. Give them a seven rebound advantage, 22 to 15 overall. Assists are even, Bulldogs do have seven steals. You are watching the Slice Network, MySliceTV.com. Like us on Facebook, chat with us. Chat box is still empty. If you're out there watching, say hello to us. I'd like to get you on the air. Nathan King brings the ball in for the Bulldogs. Box in one, diamond in one. Damon King didn't like what he saw. Nelson Nowicki gets it to Tyrone Taylor. Nelson, Nathan Scott sees some daylight, drives in. Tough bucket for Nathan Scott. That's one thing he's been able to do all year, though, is if he sees some daylight, slash inside. And when he goes up, he's going to be able to find a way to get a shot up and generally a pretty good one. Pressure defense from Damon King and Tyrone Taylor. Able to get the turnover from DJ Rivera right. Bulldogs come back the other way. Nelson Nowicki flashes into the paint, calls for the ball. Nathan Scott didn't see him on time. Damon King, long three attempt. Rebound out to Nelson Nowicki. Pad that offensive rebounding stat a little bit. Yeah. Damon King gets the ball in the corner into Nelson Nowicki. He's going to go to work. Two dribbles. Ball is tapped out, but Freedom of Kimo wasn't able to come up with it. Back to Nelson Nowicki. Ooh, I thought Spin he was going to get two there. Not able to get it off of the uh, off the glass. Gets fouled. Foul called on Joe Samazenko. Nelson Nowicki goes to the line. He's a perfect four for four tonight. Eight points for Nelson to go along with his Two rebounds. You'd like to see a big body like Nelson get more rebounds. Five for five from the line for Nelson as he gets his ninth point. Chris Harvison comes back in the game for, for the Griffins. Nelson Nowicki able to be a perfect six for six from the line. Gets his 10th point tonight. Griffin's able to slash into the lane. Look at Joe Samazenko with the bucket. Nice assist from Jose Mosby Norris. Tyrone Taylor with the ball, hands off to Nathan Scott. Nelson Nowicki really wants that pass. I don't think Nathan's a Probably best served not to throw that in there. Too many hands to deflect it. Freddie McKeemaladen working in on that, that post against Joe Samazenko. Nathan Scott Ooh. with a shot attempt. Doesn't look good. Chris Harbison with the layup. Nathan nice Scott floater tries, there. Nathan Scott tries to draw the contact but doesn't. Here's something that's uh, kind of funny. After uh, the game, well, on Friday, they were talking in the, the coach's office about who some of the best shooters were on the team. And Coach Cooper's been working with Nathan Scott and wanted, wanted to see Nathan Scott take some more attempts. You see Nathan Scott take some more attempts, but don't know that it's quite there yet for Nathan in, in the flow of the game. That last attempt was not pretty. Nelson Nowicki kicks the ball out to Nathan Scott. I'd like to see Nelson turn around and post up on that when he had that ball that deep. Freedom of Kimaladen calling for it. Damon King with a shot from up front. Freedom of Kimaladen battling for a rebound. Can't, can't get the rebound. 
Looks like he throws uh, Sebastiano to the ground. No foul called. It is a Griffin basketball. 1-2-2 two, two trap, able to break it. Joe Samazenka with the ball inside. Swatted from Nelson Nowicki. Swatted again. Nelson gets two blocks there. They call a foul on Jose, that last one, though. Jose Mosby Norris goes up. Nelson Nowicki called for the foul on the arm. Bulldog faithful not too happy with that call. Jose Mosby Norris. Here's that, here is that uh, last look. Let's see if we can... There's the first block. Ah, I think he did get him. Looks like he did get his come across the wrist. Good call by the official there. Tell you what, that's got to be a tough job officiating basketball games, how fast they go, being able to see what everything you need to see. This Jose Mosby Norris able to convert the free throw. Brings the Griffins within one. 5-14 to go here in the fourth quarter. Nathan Scott dribbling the ball, directing traffic. See that diamond in one as Jose Mosby Norris is trying to keep tabs on Tyrone Taylor. Tyrone Taylor wanting the ball reversed. Nelson Nowicki shooting the ball from standing right on the three-point line. <laughs> and he takes and it half deep. a step backwards. He, that's a three-point attempt for Nelson. He is feeling it tonight. Wow. Turnover from the, the Griffins. Bulldogs. Come back the other way. Tyro Taylor sees Freedom Akimawadden inside. Gets the ball out to Nathan Scott. There's that jumper from Nathan Scott. Gets something going. Griffins don't like that. Want a timeout. Coach Todd McGuire wants to talk that over. We know who's definitely about to be seeing some game time here as soon. It's going to be big number 32, Benny Curtis. Full timeout from the Griffins. But you're not going to get the full Benny Curtis. That's the thing. You're not going to get the guy that's in there doing his spin moves and and bringing his elbows up and fighting for rebounds because he's got four fouls. One more and he's gone. He knows that. You gotta get your, you gotta get Curtis out there. That's your biggest presence you got on your team. I mean, without him, there's not much output from this one to talk a team. The next broadcast is on February 22nd as the Bulldogs are gonna take on the Carney Bulldogs. Bulldogs versus Bulldogs. Tune into the Slice Network for complete coverage and be sure to tell a friend. Again, that's February 22nd. That is senior night for the Grandview Bulldogs. To get to recognize Diedrich Skinner and Martician Kelly, who uh, are both actually in their first year with this team. I think Martician may have played his freshman year. Diedrich Skinner's a transfer student from uh, Louisiana, call him Cajun. <laughs> I think it was a, about three or four months before Coach Ferris actually knew his name was Diedrich. He just called him Cajun all the time. <laughs> Martician, somebody that uh, came out for the Bulldogs. They liked the energy he gave them. Didn't play for them last year, but energy off the uh, off the bench. Look to see them uh, put him in if they need to go offense, defense here. Don't know if Coach Ferris trusts him enough. Freedom of going to be called for the reach foul there on Joe Samazenko. He's going to put the Griffins on the line. I definitely think with Curtis out, the person that Grandview Bulldogs are going to have to watch here is uh, Brighton Hunsicker. I mean, he's been raining in some threes, and when you're down by five, I mean, you're going to be shooting some threes. So, got to keep your eye on him and, and close out on him every opportunity, every, every time he gets the, the ball. Samazenko not able to get that free throw to go down. It's going to be a held ball with freedom of Kimaladin. And here I, he comes. Benny Curtis, 419 with four fouls, comes into this game. Julius Sebastiano able to get the held ball. Get possession back with the possession arrow. And Nathan Scott able to pick that off. Looks like a, a cornerback over to Tyrone Taylor. Bucket and the foul for Tyrone Taylor. Able to create that contact. Nice assist from Nathan Scott. It's going to be a foul called on Chris Harbison. It's his third. Tyrone Taylor, check that. That's his second foul. Tyrone Taylor goes to the line to shoot one more. Gets there that go. to go down. Orlando Haynes checks into the game for the Bulldogs, giving them a defensive spark. Replaces Nathan Scott. You may see some of that, some offense, defense. And apparently that didn't work very well as DJ Rivera Wright goes all the way to the to the hoop, draws the foul. 
I'm going to show you a replay here. Nathan Scott gives that ball up. Good attempt. Nathan Scott and Tyrone Taylor both end up on the ground. Like Nathan Scott made a twisted an ankle as he landed there. DJ Rivera right at the line. Misses the first, and in comes Martician Kelly for the Bulldogs. Jose Mosby Norris and Joe Samazenko check back in. Benny Curtis going to take a seat. Maybe a little offense defense there with him. Pull him out on the uh, defensive possessions. Seven point advantage. Martician Kelly looks to get the ball in. Timeout by the Bulldogs. It's going to be a short timeout, 30-second timeout. Take a look at some of the stats here. Tyrone Taylor with 13. Nelson Nowicki with 12. Martician Kelly with 9. Uh, rebounding leader for the Bulldogs is Frieda McKeemaladen. Don't have stats for the Winnetonka Griffins as they're not available to me. Otherwise, we'd be giving you some of those as well. Can't tell you that the Griffins have 16 rebounds as a team, 12 assists to go along with their 17 made, made field goals. I think one of the biggest uh, points is going to be that they've only got four steals to Grandview's uh, 10. Grandview really able to turn up some pressure. Nathan Scott, three steals. And that pressure creates more, more turnovers, just in balls thrown out of bounds and uh, traveling violations, dribbling violations as well. So I definitely think Frito, I mean, Frito's been huge on the offensive end. He's gotten five points. He's got four offensive rebounds. And four offensive rebounds from anybody is amazing. Tyrone Taylor with the ball. Little, little looks like some uh, trap from the uh, from the Griffins. Orlando Haynes with the ball over to Martician Kelly who gets trapped. He is bumped. Definitely foul, a foul is there. going to be called on number two, DJ Rivera. Right. It's going to put Martician Kelly at the line. That's going to be he's going to be shooting two. Nathan Scott's going to check back in the game as is Benny Curtis for the Griffins. Where T.C. on Kelly tried to get himself into double figures. And he does just that. Orlando Haynes is going to take a breather. Where T.C. on Kelly attempting those free throws. Gets his 11th point of the game. I think he's perfect from the line. He three, is. I don't know that he's... Missed too many shots during the game. Maybe one or two, but Joe Sebo or Julia Sebastiano off the glass, gets the bucket to fall. Bulldogs inbound the ball. Damon King looks to get it off to somebody who can control it a little better. <laughs> Ends up with Nelson Nowicki. Gets the ball inside. Martician Kelly with a reverse layup. Where has Martician been all year? What's he got, 13 points now? 13 points for Martician Kelly. Foul's going to be called on Nathan Scott. So Zay Mosby Norris came in pretty out of control, and Nathan Scott bails him out with the contact, puts him at the line. He's going to be shooting one and one and one. So Joe Samazenko comes in. Bulldogs are going to try and run uh, Orlando Haynes and Freedom Akimaladen back into this game. Give Nathan Scott and Martician Kelly a breather. Martician Kelly 13, Tyrone Taylor 13. Leading scorer, Martician Kelly. Freedom Akeem Laden with the uh, rebound. Tyrone Taylor sees Damon King. Nelson Nowicki takes a couple of dribbles. Ball's turned over. Chris Harbison, easy layup. Nelson Nowicki looks to get the ball out real quick. Gets it off of uh, Chris Harbison's foot, and they're going to let that go. Isn't that a kick ball? That should have been. Ball is off of the Griffins, one of the officials says. One official comes in and says he had it another way. They're going to talk it over. And we don't have a call yet. It's going to be Griffin basketball. One official. Grandview. I'm sorry, that's Bulldog basketball. I knew it was Bulldog basketball all along. I don't know why I was calling it Griffin basketball. 
Bulldogs are going to take a 30-second timeout here to talk things over. 2.50 to play. Bulldogs up 58-51. That next broadcast reminds you about February 22nd, Grandview High School. It's the Carney Bulldogs, Bulldogs versus Bulldogs. As a, a PA announcer, that's always fun, particularly in football. Call somebody the Bulldogs and call somebody else the uh, Carney is how I end up doing it because we're always the Bulldogs when I'm uh, doing the PA announcing. Some people want me to say Grandview. Why should we change this? Because they come into our house. That's, that's, what, that's my mantra. Damon King looks to inbound the ball. Tyrone Taylor streaking is going to be get some contact called. Looks like it's going to be a blocking foul on Julius Sebastiano. I'm actually uh, surprised at that yeah, call. As a, as, as a Bulldog baseball, as a, somebody who loves, loves my Bulldogs, I thought that Sebastiano had himself positioned. But and McGuire is hot. He is he laying is into the official. Not agreeing with that call at all, and I can't blame him. Benny Curtis sitting on the side, going to come in with 2.48 to go. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with uh, Coach McGuire there. I don't know what he saw. Tyrone Taylor misses free throw. This has been a storyline this year is Tyrone Taylor missing free throws late. He's such a good shooter. For whatever reason, he, he has a hard time. Although last game, the Ray South game, he played every single second. And maybe that's why at the end of the game, legs aren't quite there. He gets that one to fall short. Front rims it, but is able to get the roll. 59-51 Bulldogs. Nice Great entry pass. pass. Jose Mosby Norris gets the ball inside. Easy look. Damon King brings the ball up. It's a little one-on-one. -on -one. Gets by Chris Harbison. Raises up. Nelson Nowicki. A couple of moves. Can't get the ball to fall. That should stay here with Grandview. Yeah, it looks like it's going to Grandview basketball. Nathan Scott's going to check in for the Bulldogs. And Marquise Doherty in for... McGuire is still lighting these refs on fire. I don't blame him. I know that if the tables were turned, Coach Ferris would be as well. Lob to Nathan Scott. Comes down with it. Creates some contact. Tries a flop there, but yeah, I don't think he got the call. Mosby Norris gets flopping. Doherty is going to come in from behind and get Nathan Scott. Well, I think the one, one official is telling Jose Mosby Norris there's got to be more contact than that if we're, you're going to want us to call. In comes Martician Kelly. Benny Curtis going to look to check in the game. Definitely seeing some offense defense with Benny Curtis. Nathan Scott misses the uh, free throw attempt. Freedom Akimawadin takes a seat. Get some energy from Martician. Or Marty, as the, as the team calls him. Nathan Scott misses both free throws. Something tells me Coach Cooper's going to eat a little bit of crow uh, after this game from Coach Ferris. David King knocks the ball away. Griffin's retained possession underneath. We got Grandview up here by six with two minutes and 13 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Both so we're teams, having an interesting game for sure. Both teams in the double bonus. Any foul from here on out is going to be two shots for the team. Nathan Scott over to Damon King. Going to take it himself. Not able to get there. A lot of contact underneath. No foul called. Foul's going to be called on Jose Mosby Norris. Going to send Nathan Scott to the line to shoot two. Gets it to fall. That's going to be Nathan's seventh point. Freedom Akeem Aladdin checks in for Martician Kelly. The Bulldogs have three scores here in uh, double digits. You got Nelson Nweke and Tyrone Taylor and Martician Kelly. Freedom Akeem Aladdin getting close to that double digits in uh, rebounds. He's got seven. Don't know we're going to see ourselves any double doubles tonight. And uh, as usual, Benny Curtis goes to work inside and is fouled as he attempts to go up. Nelson Nowicki looks perplexed as that foul is going to be called on him. Asks what he's doing. 
Betty Curtis goes to the line to shoot two. Try to draw the Griffins within six. They're down eight right now. Sure. Front rims it able to get that to roll home. Little shooter's roll. Looks like uh, Marquise Doherty is going to check in for Benny Curtis if he makes this second free throw. Were you ever ever uh, tempted to miss a free throw on, perp on purpose when you know you were being pulled? Absolutely. <laughs> nah. And Benny Curtis misses that free throw, gets his own board, goes up strong. To <laughs> get, that's Yeah, that's exactly what I used to do all the time uh, back in the day. Bulldogs call a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout. Looks like Randy Ferris isn't very happy as he's shaking his head. Diedrich Skinner checks in. I think that uh, uh, lack of uh, rebounding is not going to make him very happy at all. 61-56 on the scoreboard. Bulldogs up five. As we look at the stats, only two block shots for the Bulldogs. Nelson Nowicki and Tyrone Taylor each have one. Not often you see a, uh, a guard get a uh, block shot, but with a 6-3 frame, Tyrone is able to out outsize several. Tyrone Taylor had a uh, big block, I believe it was right before the half. Uh, and swatted it back to about the free throw line from the, the hoop. So it was, it, was, it was a huge block. And then Nelson had two, but one was called back on a foul. Two in one play. Yeah. And uh, Mitchell saw the second one being on the arm. Bulldogs inbound the ball. He's not necessarily uh, getting it done on the boards, but with with Nelson, it's more about his uh, six foot eight presence than anything. And Jose Mosby Norris takes the, gets the ball briefly, not able to control it. Takes a spill into the bench. Coaches are real happy with that effort. Anytime a player uh, is hustling that much, you got to love that. Bulldogs inbound the ball to Diedrich Skinner. Going to work against Jose Mosby Norris. Ball is tapped away. Loses the ball out of bounds. Benny Curtis runs in real quick. You're absolutely seeing offense defense here. Nelson Nowicki come back in defensively for Diedrich Skinner. Not often you see a six foot eight kid replace the, they list him at 5'10", but Diedrich Skinner's no 5'10". <laughs> might be 5'8", five, might be five eight if we're nice to him. Of course, the Bulldogs did list a, a JV guard at 5'10", and I can guarantee you DeAnthony Berry's no, no more, better than 5'2". Julia Sebastiano gets inside, creates some contact. Is able to get the bucket. Three point advantage for the Bulldogs, timeout from the uh, the Griffin bench. Griffins want more time put back up on that clock. As someone who's worked that clock, I can tell you uh, our machine is not the easiest to get stopped in the world as it's not a, a, a flip switch. It is a soft electronic switch and sometimes if something gets moved there, it is not easy. Uh, Linda Whitford, math teacher here at Grandview High School has worked that clock for many years. Uh, does a great job with it. So every once in a while, that finger does not, it doesn't get it to do what it wants. And we're going to put seven seconds back on that clock. 1.26 to go here at Grandview High School. Bulldogs lead by three. So we do a spot check of the, what we've got going on. We've got Tyrone Taylor with 14, Martizian Kelly with 13, and Nelson Nowicki with 12 for the Bulldogs. Other contributors, David King with seven, Freedom Akeem Aladdin with five. Nathan Scott with eight, and Wesley Nosekiri with two. Hope uh, West look down the bench there, see Wesley still sitting on the side with uh, uh, athletic trainer Amanda Payne sitting ne standing next to him. I imagine he's got some ice on that knee. Looks kind of dejected down there. That's kind of what always happens is you, you certainly don't want. It's Tyrone Taylor's dad sitting up there up top. Tyrone Taylor seniors coached a lot of these boys for a lot of years uh, in AAU ball. Constant voice for the uh, 
for the Bulldogs in Tyrone's, uh, in Tyrone's ear. Nathan Scott gets fouled as he goes around. Tyrone Taylor was hoping he could get a pass across the, the way for him. Nathan Scott under duress, not able to do that. Fouls called on DJ Rivera right. It's going to be his third. Nathan Scott's going to go to the line. I tell you what, if you're the uh, Griffins, that might be the guy to foul right now as Nathan has not looked particularly good uh, shooting the ball tonight. Front rims it. Benny Curtis comes in. There's that offense defense. If we take a look at Nathan Scott's uh, free throw. He, he raises way behind his head oftentimes, and you get a real – High arch, which is I think why where that ball comes into the front on the front rim. Gets this one to fall. The ball didn't go quite as far behind his head as it did on the last one. It's funny that, that you say his uh, his strokes been off because that's exactly what Curtis motioned to one of his teammates before he checked in. That, that, that's who they wanted to foul. Oh yeah, they said uh, he, his shot's been off. Harbison. Good look inside. Nelson Nowicki gets the rebound and tied the jump up. Jump ball is going to be going Grammy's way. And offense, defense. Doherty checks in. Benny Curtis checks out. 103 to go. At what point do you let Benny Curtis play it out? Do you keep doing the offense, defense? Or Inside of 20 seconds. Until then, you just keep switching them. Because if he fouls out too early, Damon you lose King. every chance to win this game. Inbounds the ball to Nathan Scott. Gets it over to Damon King. Back thing. Throws it out of bounds our way. My Slice TV getting into the action a little bit here. <laughs> My hands did not uh, disappoint me that time. I was, I was afraid, though. I had some help behind me if I needed it. Damon King inbounds the ball to Nelson Nowicki. They're going to run a trap at him, although that's a tough man to trap with his big. Oh, freedom of Keem Aladdin inside. Great look from Damon King. Push that lead to six for the Bulldogs. Jose Mosby Norris comes back the other way. Coach Ferris yelling, don't foul. Jose Mosby Norris with the ball on the wing. Inside look, Julius Sebastiano. Easy bucket. Four-point lead. Ball in to Nathan Scott. Comes in. He's going to be fouled by Julius Sebastiano. Going to go to the line to shoot two. Foul is called on Sebastiano. His third. Nathan Scott gets that one to go. That's going to be his 10th point of the game. We've got four Bulldogs in double figures tonight. Five-point advantage for the Bulldogs. Nathan Scott looks to make this six and does. May have found a stroke a little bit. Bulldogs going to try and stop ball here a little bit. They might need Inside. to find someone new to, to, uh, to foul. Nathan Scott gets it off to Nelson Nowicki. He's going to have to put the ball on the floor. And that's not ever what you want to see. He's fouled hard. Going to have to earn those at the line. DJ Rivera Wright says you are going to have to earn those two points. You're not going to get it easy on us. Well, and I think that's one of the last people they wanted to send to the line, in all honesty. Brought up an interesting stat that kind of had me shocked earlier that he's only 58% uh, from the line this season, but he's what, five for six five? For six, six for tonight. six from the line? Seven for seven <laughs> from Nelson Nowicki. I mean, that's a sign of consistency that right is there. The you never heard of Shaq doing anything <laughs> like this. So, And one of the things that Nelson does have in common with Shaq are those big hands. It's always been one of the problems with those big guys is their hands are so big, it is hard to figure out the right way to, to make that shot. And Nelson... Pulls that left hand off, so it's not in his way, and puts some good, that's I think the key here, it's the spin that Nelson puts on that ball. Finds the, the roll home, that's eight for eight from Nelson. So an eight point lead here with 15 seconds left as Winnetonka just really hustles the ball in there and gets two. Rivera right gets in, makes it a six point game, 11.0 to go, it's gonna be a full timeout from the Griffins. 11 seconds to go, we probably got about uh, Ten minutes or so left with all the fouls and timeouts <laughs> that will be called here. So, Well, the advantage that the uh, that high school has as far as getting the game going a little quicker is they certainly don't have all of the uh, – uh, the, the, the clock doesn't stop on a made shot. It keeps running. So it is a, not quite like the NBA. This is three possessions in the NBA, and you get to advance the ball to half court when you call a timeout. <laughs> I mean, it's 11 seconds, it's three, four possessions. 
But I think here at uh, Grandview, you might see two One possessions two. at most. Six point lead for the Bulldogs. Coach Ferris is going to draw up an inbound play, make sure they can get the ball in. One of Coach Ferris's favorite inbounding inbound play. One of Coach Ferris's favorite inbounds play is the uh, uh, start the ball with one man, have somebody else run down, pass the ball out of bounds to that uh, that second guy who then inbounds the ball to kind of reverse the uh, opponent's field. Let's see if he has that drawn up tonight. Seen him do that a lot. You're watching MySliceTV.com, the Slice Network. We thank you for joining us. And here we got. Tyrone Taylor with the ball. Hands off to uh, Damon King, but it is going to be a quick foul. 9.3 to go. Tyrone Taylor is going to go to the line to shoot two. Foul called on number 12, Chris Harbison. Tyrone Taylor with 14. Nelson Nowicki with 14. Martizian Kelly with 13. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, my player of the game goes to Martizian Kelly. I think... I think Martician Kelly is certainly the surprise player of the game. He had some great minutes. Tyrone Taylor with that late free throw miss. Without Martician all, se all season. Really coming in here and blowing the doors off this game. I think it's a completely different game. I mean, it counts for 13 points, and without him, Grammy's got 55. Now there's no telling who else would have picked up the slack, but coming from a guy that averages, you know, 1.5 points a game and almost putting up 10 times what he what he normally does. Sebastiano with three-point attempt. Misses it. Going to try it again. Not able to go. Bulldogs are going to be the victors. 68-62 here at Grandview High School. We're going to see if we can't catch up with one of those players here in just a second. See Grandview there shaking uh, hands with Winnetonka. Benny Curtis not looking too happy about the loss tonight. Grandview walks away with a 68 to 62 lead. We're going to try and grab a post game interview here with one of the key players from the game. Looks like we've snagged Tyrone Taylor, so we'll be going to him momentarily. I'm here with Tyrone Taylor. Tyrone at 14 tonight. How's it working against that box and one, diamond and one they run? Oh, it's uh, it's real tough, man. It's just getting open is the hard part, and then making a shot is even harder because I, I'm thin all my energy trying to get open. Talk a little bit about your teammates' contribution, in particular Martician Kelly off the bench with 13 tonight, career high. Oh yeah, that's nice. Uh, with a, seeing them score when we're in the box and one is uh is even better than me scoring a lot of points when we're not playing because everybody's contributing, everybody's having fun. That's that's all that matters. Having fun. Talk about what this win means as you work towards district here in, in two weeks, try to get some things right uh, after a couple of uh, tough, close games. This is a big win because we played against the team two weeks ago against the same thing and we lost. We obviously show, getting the win today obviously shows that we got better. And, you know, just, it's, it's really, it's, uh, and then we get to build towards what, you know, districts, like you said, yeah, build towards districts. Thanks a lot, Tyrone. Great game tonight. You heard Tyrone Taylor talking about how difficult it was getting around that box in one and the diamond in one there, but he still persevered here with 14 points. It's a pretty good game when uh, a lot of the defensive focus is on you. And another good key point that he hit on there was the fact that Martician Kelly was able to score in that box in one and really do something he's not known for and put up 13 points. Not quite the game that we, we kind of expected out of the Bulldogs with the, their size advantage. We, we were hoping to see them uh, end up with uh, – more points, I think, out of those those interior guys, maybe even some more rebounds. But it, I think the sides advantage certainly helped out there in the end with Nelson Nowicki uh, contributing 14 points, eight of them from the line, eight of perfect, eight of eight for Nelson Nowicki. That would have been another great one to uh, to chat with. Uh, we had our we had our pick tonight with Tyrone Nelson, Martician, Freedom, Akima Laden having a big game, Damon King having a big game, great contributions all the way around from the Bulldogs. As we look forward with the uh, to the Bulldogs, they've got. Senior night, February 22nd, against the Kearney Bulldogs. That'll be broadcast right here on the Slice Network. Uh, Bulldogs already know who their first draw is in district. They're going to play Kansas City Southwest that first game of district. They did get the three seed 
uh, have to run into Ray South in that second game if they're able to win. And then center is probably the favorite on the other side of the bracket with the uh, with the one seed. So certainly people who Grandview is very familiar with as we, we head towards districts. Uh, if you're Coach McGuire, what are you telling your uh, your – your Griffins as you uh, are in the locker room right now? Not much. I mean, I mean, you see they got beat on the boards there, 18 to 27, and anytime you're getting beat that by almost double digits on the rebounds, you're not going to have a good game. Uh, Griffin's record goes to 15 and 7 on the year. Bulldogs improved to 9 and 12. If you're Coach Ferris, what are you telling your guys right now? Great you, game. If you can take down a team that's got 15 wins and uh, you, you're coming into the game at what, what, 8 and 12? Uh, and, and you're taking down a team with 15 wins. I, th I think you got to commend these guys on a good game, especially Martizion Kelly. The yeah. biggest surprise of the game was him putting up 13 points, if almost 10 times his production. If you're Coach Ferris, are you uh, looking to give him more minutes as, as things move forward, or do you think maybe this just happened to be oh, yeah. the no. team, a, a good team for him to, to match up against? Any, I mean, they were running one of the toughest defensive schemes to get around, and if he's going to put up 13 points, yeah, I definitely think he earned some more minutes. I, I know Martizion will be very happy with that if that, <laughs> if that ends up happening, and I uh, know Martizion pretty well. You're watching the Slice Network on MySliceTV.com. We are happy you joined us today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. Uh, I'm Kenny Unker. And I'm Mike West. We'll see you next time. That's February 22nd for Senior Night as we take on the Kearney Bulldogs. MySliceTV.com. Thank you and have a great night. <laughs>